Bam and Abayo is an all-star for the third time. It was announced on Thursday night, and he's on his way to Indianapolis to join the best players in the NBA. What does this say about Bam's status around the league? We'll debate that and more and talk about Jaime Hawkins Jr., also representing the Heat, and some turmoil in Los Angeles that has some mm. Heat fans connecting the dots and a royal reunion possibly in the works. Great show to kick off your weekend on today's episode of Locked on Heat. You are locked on Heat. Your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Uh, all right, welcome to Locked On Heat. Your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. I'm Wes Holmberg, editor at allyoucaneat.com. Joining me as always is longtime NBA reporter David Lamel. However, you're tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app. Thanks so much for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your best bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We'll get to some of the other big all-star storylines, including whether or not Jimmy Butler can make his way onto the team in a minute. We also will get to the latest on LeBron James and those trade rumors brewing in Los Angeles. But let's start with Bam Adebayo, who was named an all-star reserve on Thursday night. It's going to be his third all-star appearance of his career. David, are you surprised that the coaches voted him in? No, I'm not. I think it's just really interesting that it seems like Bam Adebayo has the respect around the league that he can't even get from his own fan base. It's just incredible to me to see that coaches around the league respect what Bam Adebayo does, his defense, his playmaking, his scoring ability and the fact that all those things have improved this season and that he is so highly viewed now that there wasn't even much turmoil about there wasn't really a lot of blowback and people complaining about oh why is bam being selected there was some because there always is but for the most part it just seemed like it was a a natural fit for bam and a bio to be considered one of the top 20 players in the nba and that's where he is that's where he's been able to achieve this season and and over the course of his career is that he's viewed that highly and respected that much from coaches and others around the league for his effort and for everything that he does on the court. And yet Heat fans complain that he's playing out of position, that he's not nearly aggressive enough. And this has been going on for years. You know, it's just incredible to me to see Bam being able to achieve all this on this kind of large scale. And he can't even get that same kind of level of respect from fans. He got fewer votes than Kristaps Porzingis got for the Celtics, and there's no doubt that. And Kristaps Porzingis awesome. is having a nice year in Boston. He, he might sure. he might end up making the All Star game as an injury replacement. Who knows? But and I know there's the whole Boston media mafia pushing Kristaps Porzingis and Derek White and all these yeah. things. But I, um, yeah. Bam should is a better player than Kristaps Porzingis. Is my point. He should be getting many more votes than Kristaps Porzingis. He's also a multiple time All Star. This is his third All Star game. That said. I think this is good. This is not going to be his last All Star appearance. To your point, yeah. coaches love Bam, and coaches are in charge of the reserves. So he's probably he will never be an All Star game starter, voted by the fans. We'll get to whether or not he's going to start in this game or in a second, but he'll never be voted by the fans as an All Star game starter. Probably right. It would like take Joel Embiid moving to the Western Conference or something, basically. But yeah, and, now, and now that Chris- it's all front court players, like they don't even really need a technical center at that yes. spot either. So he's yes. never going to make it. Yeah, just like Chris Bosh, but. Because he has the respect of so many coaches, I don't even know that coaches are going to look at his stats. I think he's that respected by his other coaches. Like, as long as he's hitting some sort of, like, threshold, he can make it averaging 18 and 10. No problem. Because of what he does defensively. And coaches are always just going to average. I don't know how many all-star games he's going to have. He's 26 years old right now. 27 years old right now. Um, he's already got three. Three in the last five years. Yeah. He's just going to keep making it as long as he's healthy. The only reason he only missed one of those, it would be, this would be his fourth. If not for the, the what was it, the hand, the thumb injury that kept yep. him out for the whole first half of two years ago. Yep. He would have made it. This would have been his fourth. So I love it. I'm here for it. But you brought up an interesting point before we started recording, David, that he might even, he might end up starting because of the injuries that we have to Joel Embiid, which we're not really sure what it is, but it's a left uh, our, our torn meniscus maybe in the right knee but it might also night might it might just be a weekend kind of sprain who knows based yeah. on the reporting around it it's safe to say he's probably not going to play in indianapolis he's already got the the credit as being an all-star starter and all those things he doesn't need to play in this game so if he doesn't that opens up 
that fifth starting spot in the Eastern Conference. Do you think Bam, because he's the only other center on the roster, Currently. do you think he, he's just sort of the natural guy to move into that spot and actually start this game? Well, I think that makes a lot of sense because coaches, as much as they acknowledge, look, we're not going to you know, try to grind your knees through this uh, whole exhibition game and things of that sort, they still want to win. They still want to be able to make it competitive and make it interesting for fans. You know, they're probably persuaded by the league offices. So, you know, no, make sure it's competitive at the very least. They have the charities not- too. I think yeah. it's Boys and Girls Club for the West, the Special Olympics for the East. I might, I think I have those right. Exactly. Yes, yeah. uh, that's exactly right. So I, I think there's cer- that's certainly a factor. But you and I were even talking about it too. We were, we're debating like who coaches the Eastern Conference all stars might have a large say in who's elected uh, yeah. and who winds up starting, and so there's a lot of different factors to that. Because yes, I think Bam, as the only center on the roster currently, is a natural fit to take on Nikola Jokic on the other side. But you also yeah. brought up a good point that Giannis Antetokounmpo can handle that responsibility if needed. Again, there's not like and a you could just go again three defense. front court players and two back court players. So you do no, you no longer do you have to go strict center at that spot. Right. So you could go. So it's Bam. And Paolo Bencaro and Jalen Brown are currently the reserves in terms of the front court. Also, Julius Randle, but he's going to be out right. for the next two to three weeks. So he's so there's two injury replacements open in the Eastern Conference. Right. And that brings up a whole other sort of conversation of who replaces yeah. these guys and whether or not one of those injury replacement guys can start, which again, I don't I would have a hard time thinking that they just move an injury replacement guy into the starting lineup, but they could. Who knows? Uh, especially like you said before, like who's gonna who's gonna coach this team? Because it can't be Joe Missoula, because the NBA put a nice rule in place for the coaches where you're not you're not allowed to coach twice in a row. So at this point, if the All Star game was today, it would be Doc Rivers, who was broadcasting games and doing podcasts like four days ago. What a racket! <laughs> what a racket! Like he's got himself in such a nice spot. He's like, let me consult, or I should say, let me consult. You know, oh, for good. the Milwaukee yeah. Bucks, you know, he, he's just going to be consulting in the background, getting paid to consult and then just sit back and be like, well, Adrian Griffin got fired. I guess I should take over. I'm the natural fit. Hey, for Doc it. Rivers, our new consultant. What do you consult us to do? What do you think you ought to do? Well, I think you should fire your coach and hire me. Okay. Well, you're the <laughs> consultant. There you go. That's how consulting works. Um, and then he winds up coaching the all-star game too. Without so he having might done end anything doing in, it. Um, and he, has he yet if, to win a game in Milwaukee? I don't know yet. No, I think he's 0-2. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, interesting. so yeah, at this rate, maybe they, he won't coach it because they're only a half game up of, on the Knicks. So maybe it's right. Tibbs. Uh, the Cavs are only a half game back, so it could be J.B. Bickerstaff. So we'll see. I don't know. I think they probably – I think they would probably go Bam just to keep everything kind of copacetic. I don't know that yep. you want to start Paolo Bencaro or Jalen Brown, even though, like I said, like Giannis did a nice job the other night guarding Luke, uh, Jokic, but I also don't know how much they care about something like that to start the All-Star game. Eventually, all these guys get subbed out after the first four or five minutes, and then they start rotating lineups and stuff like that so everybody can just play with their friends. So that's basically what's going to happen. So. I think I think um, because the coaches respect Bam, they might just be like, you know what, go for it, kid. Like, let's go. Burn it. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's talk about a little bit about who these injury replacements might be, though. Um, so we're gonna have two spots open: no Joel Embiid, probably no Julius Randle, almost certainly. And so, um, if we're looking at guys that they could bring in, we already mentioned uh, Christoph Porzingis, Derek White. I think the obvious snub is Trey Young. Jarrett Allen is a possibility. I know he got some all-star Scotty votes. Barnes. Scotty Barnes. I think Pascal Siakam isn't getting talked about enough because he was traded, but his stats are awesome, and he's played in almost every game this year, if not every game. Yeah. Um, and uh, Jimmy Butler, potentially. Can Jimmy Butler sneak his way into the all-star game? What do you think? No, I, I think he's going to toss his phone in the ocean, and he's, <laughs> gonna ha- he's got Adam Silver's number Sorry, blocked. Sorry, What did that happen with James Harden? That happened with James. Was that last year where he just missed Adam Silver's calls because he was like, I I never even heard this. This is. Oh, yeah. No, he just missed the call. uh, Yeah. And then he got pissed at the league that he wasn't. uh, And then they ended up. I can't remember who got in. Was it Jared Allen? That is ridiculous. Uh, Uh, Yeah, that's crazy. But no, but that's the point, right? Adam Silver makes a decision on the injury replacements. It's his job. Yeah. So if he were to just kind of of that entire list, I think Jimmy Butler is kind of. I don't know that this is going to be unlikely. so, but he's sort of earned the right to be sort of the first option. It's Jimmy Butler. He's one of the stars. Do you the really league. think so? He's a bigger star than any of those other names that I mentioned. And if That's you're talking fair. about the All-Star game, then oh, wow. 
so if he gets that first phone call, he says, thank you very much, but no thanks. I'm going to Barbados. Like, he's not going. There's no way. But he might get the first phone call, but he ain't going. Oh, man. I don't. No, I, I, I don't. Can you refuse that? Like, I, I don't even yes. know if that's possible. I, I don't know who would either. Like, I don't know. Okay, only Jimmy. All, I, oh, only Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, only Jimmy's the only person yeah. in NBA history would be like, nah, thanks, but no thanks. I'm not really at all that interested. I'm not going to Indianapolis. If it was in New York, I would go. <laughs> That's a good point. Too. Move the All-Star game to New York and I'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Is Indianapolis a big coffee city? I somehow doubt it. Uh, I don't know. That's interesting. I, I hadn't even considered that he would be the first name to be called because it of star be status or, like well i guess trey young you could argue he's a big star too and his stats are better. is he yes he's yes big star. i don't know I mean, the jersey sales are up there he's i mean okay. he's not as big as jimmy but that would be the only other one like yeah i got a feeling yeah man i don't know i, I got a feeling it'll be young then based on that rationale well yeah and that seems like the, yeah yeah young and probably i, I can't and jimmy I can't imagine one backward guy and one front court guy wow. i don't know He's only played one fewer game than Bam. So it's not like he's been that hurt. It just feels like he's been that hurt. And his stats are, like, his counting stats are fine. But, I, I look, I think, you know, Boston fans are screaming, no, Derek White, Kristaps Sporzingis yeah. deserve it more. And honestly, they're probably right. They probably deserve it more based on their first half of the season than, than Jimmy Butler does. But they're not star players the way that Jimmy Butler is. And this is just, this is a popular It's an entertainment contest. thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, let's talk about whether or not these guys were snubbed, whether or not the NBA got it right. And plus, what can we expect from Jaime Jaquez and Bam Adebayo during these games? We'll talk about that next year on Locked on Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I know so many of you are looking forward to Super Bowl Sunday, the unofficial holiday here in the United States. It's all about scoring the best team to catch grabbing your favorite snacks, and placing some super bets. There's so much to look forward to, the the commercials, the actual on-field play. I mean, I don't know. There's just so many things to look forward to when it comes to the Super Bowl. Like I said, it's kind of like this whole holiday festivity. Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of gets together. They're already making plans. Do you have your Super Bowl li a party lined up yet? I have not yet, but I'm, Me sure neither. I'm, I'm in between out. a couple of different things. Uh, the Heat play that afternoon against the Celtics, so it could be like yeah. a double whammy of sports, which would be really fun, especially if the Heat get the win. But um, I also love to just get all my bets lined up. So for like these next this next week week and a half, yeah. I'm listening to all these like gambling podcasts, like like Locked On Bets and all these things that we have that I don't normally listen to because I love the prop bets. I love to just have a like a whole sheet printed out with with uh, friends and family and just be like, all right, what's hitting? And it gives you just yeah. something extra to root for. Especially in the Dolphins. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Well, FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or maybe two or maybe three. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 58, that is, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers, if you join today, you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. Every day as we'll be back Monday morning with a recap of Sunday's game against Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, James Harden, and the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, the Heat play the Wizards tonight. We will not have a recap for you on that game because it's a Friday night. Um, all right, so a couple of points of information before we get to some of these other topics that I want to hit. So Bam Adebayo, great. I, I think he's actually somehow having an underrated season. I know it's been a little bit of a rough stretch for him shooting-wise. He's been in this slump that maybe he's starting to come out of after that Sacramento Kings win. But 20.6 points, 10.6 rebounds, and 4.2 assists. Uh, there's not a whole lot of guys doing that and anchoring their defense. There's just not a whole lot of guys doing that in the NBA. He is joining elite company in Miami Heat history. He is one of six players in Miami Heat franchise history to be named to the All-Star game three times while playing for the Miami Heat. He Ooh. joins Alonzo Mourning, oh, Shaquille O'Neal, Dwayne Wade, yeah. LeBron James. Oh, you wanted to guess. Ah, oh, sorry. That would have been a fun okay. segment. Screwed it's that okay. one up. Bad radio. No, West. Okay. Uh, LeBron and Chris Bosh are the other two. Uh, he's he, And he's going to keep making more of these like we were talking about uh, before. Um, in terms of what happens in the game, 
He's already made the All-Star game twice. This is his third. His first time in 2019-2020, he played almost 12 minutes, had eight points, two rebounds, and an assist. So that was his first All-Star. It was like, all right, congrats, but you're not going to play as much as the superstars. And that's sort of what happens with young players in the All-Star game. Yep. Uh, in 2023, he played 23 and a half minutes, uh, but actually shot only two field goals, made both of them, had four points, zero rebounds, and one assist. So he played long. He played way more, but had worse stats. Wasn't as aggressive. I remember that one. He was just sort of like hanging out, setting screens. I was like, you're setting screens in the All-Star game? Yep. I'm like, good yep. for you, man. He, uh, I don't eat know. basketball. <laughs> yeah, he basketball. What do you expect out of him this time? I, I feel like he's got to go out there and do something because based yeah. on the, the that, that great Brian Windhorst story about how Bam wanted to be talked to Brian and said, Hey, I want to be considered on the elite, elite class. All star weekend, baby. And if you're named a starter, go out there and be the best center on the court or try I agree to. On, I agree 100%. I think if he's named a starter, I think I'm going to call my shot right now. I think he'll be the game's MVP because what? I think he'll be, yeah, I think he'll be extra, <laughs> extra aggressive, you know, because he has this incredible elite athleticism that again gets somehow undervalued by heat fans but in that kind of loose setting where it's not nearly as competitive at least it probably won't be until the fourth quarter like i could just see him going for dunks you know maybe mm. taking an extra step here and there uh traveling a little bit and getting that explosive dunk that we've seen from him if he gets a couple of uh, mid-range jumpers to fall and if he even knocks down a three-pointer i could see him kind of get loose a little bit and be like I'm here. I'm a starter. This isn't me just looking for an opportunity to get out there and, again, set screens as a reserve. If I go out there as a starter, I want him – I expect him to, like, be a little juiced up for it and maybe put up some big numbers, big enough numbers that I think he could be an MVP candidate. He's got that foul line jumper now. He That didn't, that wasn't in his toolbox the last time he was an all-star, right? And so yep. that gives him something that he can get to, right? And, and with the dunks and like, – nobody guards the basket. He should go out there, especially if he's a starter – Nobody right. plays defense for the first 24 minutes of this thing. Nobody. Right. And right. so you could just like that lane's open. Just grab the ball and go. Grab the right. ball and go. Giannis is probably just over it at this point. The only yeah. other guy, the only other guy who might want it is Halliburton. And it oh. might be like it might be Halliburton oh. and Bam just vying for the MVP. And I'm here for it. I love, I love like those little rivalries because now yeah. you've got like the two players on the same team kind of going for this MVP thing. And then eventually yeah. one of them just is like. Nah, I'm taking it. That, that was the case uh, with Damian Lillard a couple years ago. It was like Dame versus somebody else. Was it Dame and Steph kind of go? It was Dame and somebody else going one on one on their own team, and then Dame just like, I'm not giving you the ball anymore. I'm just I'm gonna take over. Uh, so I'm here. I'm I here could, for Bam. I could see LeBron doing it too. Like you know, no one's done. No one's won All Star Game MVP thirty nine years old, forty Jesus. or whatever. Yeah. Just like the in-season tournament. So it's good. like he needs so much so extra good. motivation to so kind of like extra pettiness, you know, right. to, to kind of fuel him. And, and I think he would be like, nah. I, I feel like stay. it's going to be Anthony Edwards just trying to steal the ball from LeBron Ooh. in the Western Conference. Let's talk about the teams. I, I want. I love talking about these. Did they, did they get it right in the East? I think so. I, yeah. I think they did a great job, to be honest yeah. with you. I, I, I was a little surprised, again, not, not just in, in terms of Bam, but in general. Like, there, you're always going to get some complaints and, you know, no, no Trey Young, no Scotty, no, you know, no Derek White. How come you didn't start Nima Kata over there? You know, right. well, Derek, Derek White is, look at the guards who made it. Starters, we got Damian Lillard and Tyrese Halliburton. I I could quibble with Dame, but his yeah. numbers were awesome. And Halliburton yeah. was a shoe in to start yeah. in this thing. And if Dame wasn't starting, it probably would have been Jalen Brunson. Who I I I vote that was my vote. I had Jalen Brunson as yeah. a starter along with Halliburton. Same. I think he earned it. Um, yeah. And so okay, you swap Damian Lillard and Jalen Brunson, and then you got Tyrese Maxey and Donovan Mitchell. I think Donovan Mitchell had a really strong claim to the starting spot too. His numbers are nuts, Very much so. and he's yeah. carrying the Cavs right now without Darius Garland and Evan Mobley for most of this stretch. So I'm sorry, like Derek White, just he might make it as an injury replacement, but there was no chance he was getting in as a reserve. And every like. All these, that's NBA hipster stuff. No, Derek White, you don't really appreciate the little things. This is the all-star game. I don't, you're right. I don't appreciate the little things. It's the all-star game, man. Give me the <laughs> stars. It. I like Derek White just fine. Give me the yeah. stars in this. That said, he might make it in. I thought the, we don't have to do the whole Western Conference thing, um, but yeah. let's talk about Jaime Jaquez because we haven't talked about him making the uh, the Rising Stars Challenge. And by the way, shout yeah. out to uh, Al Al Alondis Williams and Cole Swider for making the other G League Stars thing that up, is right? also in indianapolis yeah it's not the rising star it's the next star up 
It's the next yeah. rising star, uh, yeah. the rising rising star game. Um, but so shout out to them. But, but not quite rising. Right. Yeah. Uh, the peaking star. Uh, it's Jaime Jaquez Jr. will be featured in the rising stars challenge. Uh, what do you expect right. from him in that game? A lot of points because I think he, you know, I think it's a good opportunity for him and uh, and to build his brand. Like so much of this for these younger guys is just like getting their name and their face out there and being recognized. Like you know, he's not Webanyama, right? And, mm. and and he's not he's not Chet. And so this is his his opportunity to be like, you know what? I'm still a pretty damn good rookie all on his own. And he's got a look to him, and he's got an opportunity here. And I think again with the little defense that gets played in these games. We're going to see him making these incredible dunks and everything else. Like, I think it's just a really nice chance for him to put up some big numbers and, and again, build on a little bit more name brand recognition around the league, around the country and around the world, because it is a global event. It's something to consider. He's also look, Chet, Wemby, they're the headliners on this thing if they sure. decide to play. And uh, but is the Rising Stars is like the first couple of years. You get the rookies versus the sophomores and stuff on the rookie team. He might be the best wing. Right. Mm. And so yeah. how much is he gonna have the ball in his hands? I think is interesting. He it might be a lot to your point. So I'm really excited to watch. I don't usually watch the rising stars thing. Um yeah. but now I'm kind of excited. I'll, I'll maybe maybe I'll tune in for a few minutes. We haven't gone, we haven't gone. Well, he's gonna be in a slam dunk contest. We haven't oh I'm sorry, reportedly. Re reportedly, maybe. Yeah. Yes. He refuses so, to to say to whether or not. Confirm or deny, yeah. Yes. But it's, it's exciting. Like, I mean, it could be a big weekend for him to kind of put his name out there. And again, you know, just to kind of be more more nationally recognized. Mm -hmm. So it's... it's He's already in the Mick Ultra so commercial fun. with... Uh, is it Hotels.com. Oh, Hotels.com. Hotels. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I got the sponsors wrong. He's in the Hotels.com <laughs> commercial with Jimmy. And if the, yeah. if the dunk contest is for real, and then if he shows that at the Rising Stars, the Jaime brand is going to be strong coming out of that All-Star weekend. You, could be good. Could there's be good. no chance that like we get a Duncan in the three point contest or anything like that, is there? Sure. Why not? Yeah, I know. I know it's a possibility. It just it doesn't seem like there's enough buzz. Or Tyler. The yeah. three point shooting numbers are really good. You know. Yeah. No. I, be, I, either one of them. It would be really ironic if he's there. As a, as both of them in there. Um, <laughs> they're among the elite. Like, why not? We've had uh, Steph and Clay together. I think we've had teammates uh, quite often actually together. I'm it's psyched. and that's always great for buzz. Um, I'm uh, last thing on All Stars before we move on to LeBron James, your two guesses for the injury replacements: uh, Jared Allen and Trey Young. Yeah, that's probably fair. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just put this in the universe, even though I don't think it's gonna happen. I think it'll be Jimmy and Trey. I think oh. It'll be Jimmy and Trey. Send Jimmy to Indy. Oh my Again, god! Kicking and screaming against his will. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, it'll probably be, uh, it'll probably end up being Jared Allen. The Cavs just have a much better record and, and they usually kind of re reward the winning teams here. And if you're going to put Trey Young from a losing team, you might feel the need to reward one of those winning teams, uh, with another all-star. So probably, uh, you're probably right. Are the Lakers really considering trading LeBron James? We'll talk about that next. Today's episode is brought to you by prize picks, prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy the largest daily fantasy sports platform in north america it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports it's just you against the numbers if you pick more than or less than the stat projections are two to six players you just watch the winnings roll in there's so much going on there price picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return to the second the player is rebooted price picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. It's so simple to play. Just 60 seconds, that's how long it takes to make an entry. And again, you just watch the winnings roll in. So right now, go to prizepicks.com slash LockdownNBA. Use the code LockdownNBA, and you get a first deposit match of up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash LockdownNBA. That's prizepicks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. There was a rumor going around NBA Twitter yesterday based on a tweet from an L.A.-based reporter that LeBron James is at the top of Rob Palinka's list of trade candidates. Yep. The Lakers did just beat the Celtics in Boston last night without LeBron or AD. Glorious. Glorious. 
helps that they shot like 55% from three and the Celtics shot like 33% from three. That might be a part of that. But do you buy it, David? No, I don't. I, I honestly, this, the reporter has hit on some things in the past, and you and I were debating the validity of that. It's you know, it, it's very difficult. You guess you got the Kawhi going to the Clippers thing. You got a few of these yeah. other things. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, the point is, I I just don't see you trading your best player unless he's requested it, and I don't know that LeBron's at that point in his career. No. Where... What What do you make of the uh the time the 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 hourglass emoji that he tweeted the other day? Oh, I, who knows? Time's well, running I, out. LeBron, NBA Time's mortality. Let's is that is that what it is? I think or is so. Time, He's like, is it time running out on Darvin Ham? Is it time right. running out yes. on the season? All, all, of, the all of the above. Yeah. All of the above. Time's running out on us getting a, a contender together. I'm having a great season. Have you heard that I'm 39 years old and I'm putting up these stats? And nobody's talking about how old I nobody's am. Nobody's ever done this before. Nobody's right. ever done yeah. this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard that before. Um. I, I, I don't know. I, the more, look, I, I have, the more people start talking about the LeBron situation sure, and they're just sort of bringing up, well, would, would he actually ask for a trade Would the Lakers actually trade him on paper? I don't think that there's any doubt. The right move is for the Lakers to trade LeBron James. If he can be a free agent this year. And if he, if he looks around like he has so many times and says, this team ain't good enough anymore, then he can leave. And then what do you do? You lose LeBron for nothing? I mean, this team is not good enough. You've got LeBron playing at this level. You've got Anthony Davis playing the best basketball he has in years, and you're barely 500. I don't know, like, what the next, like, what's that next step? Like, what trade is out there? Like, DeJounte Murray is a fine player. He's not getting them to the next level in the Western Conference. Zach Levine's not doing that for them. Like, what's yeah. the move for them? On paper, it kind of makes sense to trade him, even though he's 39 years old. But again, it's just so hard to fathom parting ways with the biggest celebrity in sports, hmm. the guy who chose you a few years ago. I, I just that's the part that is hard to imagine. But if Rob Belinka figures that he's going to be the GM for a long while there in the in Los Angeles, then it would make sense to be like, maybe we just we won a championship with him. That was great. Let's move on to some other things. I, I get it. I mean, it, there there are logical arguments in favor of it, but it just also seems like it's that would be just going against the face of everything that we've ever seen in terms of NBA transactional <laughs> right. history. Like right. you 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 you, mm. you you kill people to get an opportunity to get a superstar of LeBron's magnitude on your roster. You don't be like, you know what, we're kind of middling right now. Let's let's trade them while we still can and get some good value for something like that. I don't know. I I don't think LeBron leaves as a free agent, although he would be, you know, he's so easy right now. Like it's such an interesting contrast. I love having these kind of discussions, by the way, I, I just, you know, Kevin Durant, a player who will never get the love nor respect mm. that probably he deserves. You know, he made some recent comments about why he's not considered in the, the goat conversation, you know, and, and a lot of people, there's so much debating about what happened with Oklahoma city and golden state and everything else like that. But, you know, he's also been on four teams and, and, and it's hard for people to kind of, gravitate towards somebody like that because yeah. he, he he's just not forced his way up but it's it's ended badly in every place that he's gone it's like catching stuff. a fish with your bare hands it's just as soon as you get him it's, he's gone right and lebron has an opportunity to do something different where he's kind of like still respected by all the teams that he played for there was that first iteration in cleveland sure. there was the heat obviously the second iteration of cleveland and now a championship in los angeles can he be like the first superstar and and you know like kareem played for two teams Kobe played for one. Michael only played for one. And then there's, of course, the wizard stint when he was part owner, whatever. But can LeBron be the first guy to be like, look, it doesn't matter what team I play for. I'm a superstar. I'm my own brand. And everybody still considers me one of the best players, if not the best player in yeah. NBA history. So I can leave as a, as a free agent and, and play for a 15. I don't know. That just seems like, again, That's his it legacy. Seems That's his legacy, that he, isn't it? That he's bigger than the game. That he's the assassin. That if you want to talk about, we got the Chicago Bulls dynasty, we got that Spurs dynasty, we have a Warriors dynasty, and we have a LeBron dynasty. I went to the finals in Cleveland, I went to the finals in Miami, I went to the finals in Cleveland, and I went to the finals in, in Los Angeles. He was just in the finals for, what was it, eight straight years? Yeah. Like, it was just a one-man wrecking crew of just, no matter what, LeBron yeah. James is in the finals. Doesn't matter what jersey he's wearing and who his teammates are at any given season. 
I think that's already the legacy. And so because that's already kind of the thing with him, I why not? Why not look around this summer and say, Philadelphia's got a ton of cap space. Mm. I can go pair with Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid and go win another championship in the Eastern Conference. Why not? Like, why wouldn't he do it? I know that he loves Los Angeles and all these things, but have you heard that he's sure. 39 years old? He ain't got that many years left. He'd do a couple <laughs> of years in Philly, go back to L.A. Who cares? <laughs> I know we're joking about it, but I really have no long – I have no idea how much longer he'll play. Like, it could – you could tell me he'd retire tomorrow, and you could tell me he'd retire in five years, and I'd be like, yep, yeah, yeah, I could see it. You know, because There's he's times this really... season where he, when he's looking good, I'm like, he's going to play until he's 45. Like, yeah. like, why not? Right. So yeah. um, I do think he's going to win another championship somewhere or another. I think he does have that hunger. And I think even wow. if he has to take like a back seat somewhere at 43 years old, I think he'd do it. I think he would. I think the ring matters to him. But who knows? Uh, I just don't. The more people are starting talking about this, I just, it just it seems unfathomable. Unfathom. I'm yes. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take an L on that word. Um, it, it just, it, it seemed impossible <laughs> that it would ever happen a few weeks ago. But enough people keep talking about it that I'm like, mm, I don't know. And again, if you're getting the sense, the Lakers front office that LeBron might leave, then you almost have to trade him. And so let's bring it back to Miami. Yeah. If you're Pat Riley, don't you call at oh, least. Absolutely. And say, what's it going to take? And what's the one that Nick Wright, uh, Fox Sports Nick Wright, put out there? Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson in a first? I mean, you do that in a heartbeat, don't you? Absolutely. I mean, you kind of have to, as much as we love Tyler and Duncan around these year parts. Like, I, you know, again, just the brand and that being able to add and, and so many different narratives. And it's like, oh, we're closing the door on that particular chapter, you know, he probably should never have left in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many different things that you could imagine coming out of those first initial press conferences and the acqu- acquisition of LeBron James. I, I mean, a, a reporter that covers the team, we would love it. I mean, there's no oh denying God. that it would be huge just to be able to be in that locker room with LeBron on a nightly basis. Again, it's just, it would be incredible. And it just, it would be, I think it would be a better team too. Like there's also, I think, you know, his competitive spirit, the, what sure. he does bring to the table, his passing, like he is kind of perfect for the system. When you think about when Miami plays their best, he's lost a step. Sure. Maybe he's not the best defender in the world the way he once was. And yet I think he still brings enough. Like here, you're talking about questions on who to play alongside Bam Adebayo. LeBron kind of whipping passes from the corner, making all these, you know, smart cuts to another smart player in Jimmy Butler. It's like, that's really, really a good, fun team to watch. So I would be incredibly interested. <laughs> uh, in the spacing would be a problem, right? I mean, but that the competitive will to win another yeah. championship, the motivation of LeBron wants another. Jimmy wants his first. Pat Riley wants another. Eric Spolstra desperately wants another ring. All these guys, Abam wants his first ring so badly. There are yep. so many players that that competitive spirit, not to sound all mushy-gushy here, but that that that's going to trump every other team that you face in the Eastern Conference. There's not going to be a team that wants it more than that group. And the spacing, I guess, you just say the hell with it. We'll figure out somebody who could shoot. Terry Rozier, take 12 three pointers a game, buddy. It's all you. Like it, Josh Richardson, go take a bunch of threes. Like it would be those guys. Uh, but I I don't know. I, I think on that note, I think Terry Rozier probably would not be the best fit. I wonder if they the Lakers would take a Rozier Duncan Robinson trade instead of a Tyler Hero trade. Mm. I think Hero is more complimentary, you know. Sure, but Hero's the better asset. I don't know. Yeah, at this, at this point, it doesn't matter. Like if you're if you're trading LeBron, like you're not really whatever getting fair value. Yeah, right. No, that's true too. But also, it's like all right, whatever. Um, Jaime's untouchable though in that trade, right? No, yeah, you're not sending him to LA. Although that would be that'd be a feather in the cap for the Lakers to be able to get him back. But they had <laughs> yeah, their chance. They, they blew it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, thanks for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow us on your podcast app. We'll be back. We will be back on Monday with our reactions to that game against the Clippers. Meanwhile, Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering top the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel.